sidekick. Now you watch that in normal speed. So I've got to get that one first. So we go one. We'll just do three. Two. Okay, and it's very important that you hold the kick in the guard position, and I'll tell you why. If you hear, say for instance, that doesn't quite, that kick doesn't quite get there, you drop the guard, the kick goes out, but they step back and come back in. So you could do this, here, and it's here to there. I'll just do that again. You can do the double move. Here, here, guard, in. Right, so you've got to learn, there's a drill that I teach um, where you hang on to the leg and you skip in, in the side kick position. You hang on to the leg, you skip in, in the side position. position. It teaches you that balance um, on the centre. Side kick balance. Side kick balance. Here. Side kick balance. So it's pointless being able to do what I call flippy floppy kicks for the photographs. If you can't, if you're in a side kick balance position and you haven't got power behind them. I see a lot of, you know what I call just pushing the legs out. You know, it looks good for the camera. Let's put that under pressure. Okay, so every technique has to be realistic. That's why in here you'll see the breathing I do. That, I can't stop that. That's generating key spear finger. I don't hear that in anyone else's videos. This. Oh, we're doing this. Great. Let's have a look at some power. It's a different mindset. The steel trap of boom, boom, boom. Different mindset. We had it in boxing. I've had it. I used to always train like this, actually. And I know the Grand Master. This is how he trains. This is how Yun Yun Do trains. We're not training for competition. We're training for total health, mind, body, spirit, balance, all that. But when it comes down to the techniques, it's there waiting. Pop, pop, bang! That's how you do it. It isn't under any of the stretch of the imagination, just doing it for the sake of a pattern. We're not doing pattern competitions. We're not doing competitions where you can kick to the head but you can't punch to the face. Or you can't hit some certain ridiculous rules that make the individual punching bags. For me, being an ex-boxer, have fought professional fighters, um, I'm not gonna go by the book. So in self-defense, I'm not sticking to rules. But the training that I do, and we do in Yun Jun Do, in, in my classes anyhow, that's for certain, is definitely strong um, uh, samurai-type training. You know, bang, you're hitting it. You're boom, hitting the shields, boom, boom, boom. However, I take everyone at their own level. My black belts, different. They gotta be absolutely spot on, perfect, and I have to test them in, in hitting techniques and all this sort of stuff, not against me, but in, um, in, their, in their sheet focus shields. And I know when someone's got enough hitting power to do, be able to defend themselves. I mean, I've trained them. Uh, many of my students have, I've, I'm, I'm a bit, in a way I'm a bit, a bit of a visionary in many respects. Some people say I'm a little bit psychic or whatever. Um, I've got this canny, uncanny ability to sort of predict stuff that'll happen in the future. I sort of see stuff like that. And quite a few of my students, I sort of saw them that they might need a certain particular technique. Well, lo and behold, that week they're under a self-defense situation where they use that technique and it saves their life. I can tell you some stories. Won't tell them on these videos. If you ever meet you personally, 
there'll be some of those stories or with the big seminar we're doing with the Grand Master and we meet all those guys that contact him from New Guinea and uh, Germany and all these other places that he's been to 22 countries I think he, he's uh, initiated uh, we'll be talking some stories and um, Grand Master's got a few of his own the real world stuff folks right okay so the crescent side we've done that uh, did we do that on both sides we do it on this side crescent side here we go here bounce bang there Good. one more time here you got it okay now if I'm going to do a crescent kick or what I call a vertical kick the foot strikes vertically that's why it's called a vertical kick some people call it a crescent kick you can call it that but the actual impact of the kick is vertical just do that again here sorry it's there like that so here here there comes up it's like a backhander with your leg so we'll do a couple of those they've got to go out at 45 and come back very good on the bag these ones I execute these extremely well a lot of power in them in the air just got to be a little bit careful with your hips and what have you okay this is vertical kick one two sweeping three one more four Let's do a five. Five. Other side. Cross. 45. Vertical. It's a slapping technique. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay. We've done the crescent. We've done the vertical, we've done the crescent uh, side kick. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Okay, this is a standalone technique the reverse turning hip kick or the spinning heel. It's devastating. And a lot of people says, oh, you, those spinning kicks and jump kicks, they're useless. Uh, again, I say the only people who say that is those who can't do them. The spinning kick in, in itself, uh, you'll never see where that's coming if you use a, what I call a trap before you execute it. On this video, I'll just show you the spinning heel, not the spinning hook, but the spinning heel. Okay, so the spinning heel goes in an arc like so right now i've got to be a little bit careful on this side of the wall because uh, um, the spinning heel takes such a big arc i'm a little bit restricted so i'll start a little bit off center with this one so that you can see so i don't go hitting that wall that way so from here with the spinning heel you rotate when you rotate you your hand touches the glute the leg's ready and, it, and you really, it's sort of like you pre-wind it. And when you let it go, it's absolutely devastating and you hit with the back of the heel where the Achilles tendon joins. There's a calcaneus type, uh, not growth, but, but a, a bony protrudence that holds the Achilles tendon. Um, you see a lot of people using the bottom of their foot with spinning heel you know, especially in the competitive sports scene. Uh, that's okay, They're using their, their foot, that, that, that can work, but they're softening it down a bit. If you use the heel, it's good night, you know, ring triple zero, right? Okay, so here we go, spinning heel. Just watching this side of the wall, so I'll get this way a little bit. Here, ready? Three. Okay, now. We'll go the other way. Again, I've got to offset myself because because of the, you know, the radius of the kick. You know, just do that again here. Okay, the radius of the kick requires a bit of distance, so I'm over here offset. Okay, ready? 
Spin the heel kick. Devastating. Next kick coming up. All right, now, the next one I'll do before I close with the video is a double half turning kick. Now, the Grand Master was, you know, I think I've done this on, the, on some of the other videos, but anyway, I'll do it again. It's a low section uh, uh, half turning kick to the knee and then one up to the jaw. It's the old diversion attack scenario it is a devastating kick because you trap them into it so the one kick kicks in here or they drop bang the next one's to the jaw so you don't have to you don't have to be super flexible for this uh, you don't have to be super flexible for all the kicks actually just moderate flexibility is fine for self-defense and 90 degree side kicks are the best for self-defense doing the fancy full leg side kick uh, vertical kicks and all this that's great for a demonstration but in the real world it's, it's a big mistake to expose your groin to a, a, a kick, a counter kick or anything like that. So we'll do a couple of the double half turning kick. That's in the, I think it's a grey tip pattern. Um, and it's underneath, boom, boom. So you go one, two. So we'll do three on each side and just you can watch what it is. One, two. Two. Three. Two, five, four, five. Okay, we'll go to the other side. Yep. Your feet position is very important. As I've said before, you're resting back like you're sitting down with the glute. This, this leg is always very light. So your center of gravity is always on the back leg in most situations until you do the kick. Other side, one. Two. Three. Okay. Hope that is good for you and it helps. Uh, I'll be doing wrist locks. I'll be doing a whole series, building on these series. And I'll have beside the videos a timeline breakdown so if you want to just go say to double half turn and kick it might be a minute 30 minutes or something 30.2 bang just go straight to that one graham healing over now keep training and i know i talk a lot about physical stuff it's not all about the physical the stretching is very important it's a rehab in itself and the mind body spirit di discipline that's why we've pulled away from calling out what we do martial art to the human art. It's about human development. It's not about hurting people, even though you can defend yourself. So have a good day. Thanks very much. This is uh, Boxing Day on 2020. We're heading into 2021. I hope it's a great, well, I believe it'll be a great year. Well, certainly for Yun Jun Do, it'll be a big year for Yun Jun Do. You watch what happens from here. The old my nickname used to be the Terminator, and now I think I'll call myself the, the Expandinator. So we're going to expand the system. You watch what happens, folks. Graham Healy's back on the scene.